G'day guys and gal, custodies are awesome. That is just a straight up indisputable fact. But instead of just spending the next 10 minutes or so oiling myself up and getting all hot and heavy in praise of the glorious golden banana boys, I thought it'd be better for me to take you through the lore and highlight some of the most epic moments so that you too shall be a believer. But first, speaking of oiling up and getting hot and heavy, due to a few people messaging me and there being a bit of leftover stock, we are reopening the sales of the 2024 cosplay calendar for 24 hours only. If you've been living under a rock, I hired six models and had 11 cosplays handmade before then hiring a world-class Photoshop artist to transplant them into the world of Battle Mace 40 million. The best part is that the calendar is a tasteful nude calendar. The calendar comes in a cheaper, more portable A4 format or a more loud and proud A3. This is the final 24 hour restock. After this, the only way to see the images would be on my Patreon where we post the raw unedited photo decks of each month. Link is below. Today we'll go over five of the most awesome, epic, badass custody moments in the lore to show off why they're such an awesome faction. Uh, let's get into it. The first moment we're looking at today is considered pretty controversial because of how absolutely insane it was. Like even as a Custody fan, I was like, Jesus Christ. But this isn't a list about Custody realism, so I'm happy to include it. When the Indominus Crusade was launched, small Custodian strike teams would lead ships to each Loyalist chapter in order to either deliver them Primaris Marines or the technology, gene seed, and knowledge required to do so. One particular ship was attacked by a small splinter fleet of Tyranids. The Custodes escaped to a nearby planet with the Primaris tech in tow, chased by a million Tyranids. So yeah, six versus one million. The Custodes walk up a volcano and basically find a mini version of Thermopylae. The Nids would need to run up a steep hill that funneled into a type choke point where the Custodes were waiting. They also had time to build some walls and they were literally surrounded by lava. So in terms of a defense point, it was pretty solid. The Tyranids came in waves. The first was just Gaunts with a few warriors, many of them falling into the lava with the Custodes massacring the rest with ease. Then wave after wave came forward with progressively more powerful Nids. The Custodes began to die one by one. Some through just sheer overwhelming wounds, others from elite nids like a zoanathrope. Eventually, even the fucking Swarm Lord came forth to take on the final three custodies. It kills two of them before the shield captain takes it on and kills it, being wounded in the process. As the Swarm Lord dies and the Tyranids become disorientated, the Marines Malevolent arrive to kill the fleet in orbit before landing on the planet. The Marines then proceed to kill the final remaining custodian and steal the Primaris gene tech for themselves because of fucking course they did. Now you may be trying to visualize how six custodians took on a million Tyranids and I get but it wasn't quite like that. The choke point meant that the Nids could only attack in small waves and were unable to overwhelm the Custodes. The Custodes were also all Wardens, which are the Custody Elite. They were basically just in a hectic meat grinder phalanx, firing off their guns all the while. Is it pretty silly? Yes. Is it also awesome? I would say so. Not to be outdone, let's now look at the time a custodian took on an entire Primaris Space Marine chapter because they talked back to him. Yep, you heard that right. As a custodian shield captain and a squad of Sisters of Silence were accompanying a force of Primaris Marines to go reinforce their original chapter, there was a bit of an issue. The original Brazen Drakes had been experiencing a high level of corruption due to the opening of the Great Rift and their gene seed instability. Originally, they tried to purge the chapter of the Marines who were mutating, but eventually the chapter master declared the chapter independent of the Imperial leading to a civil war within the chapter on their homeworld. When shield captain Tyva arrived at the Brazen Drake's Primaris reinforcements, he was like, God damn it, these fucking space marines. And he ordered the Brazen Drake Primaris to stand down and be detained until they could determine what had happened and if the Primaris Brazen Drakes were likewise prone to betrayal or corruption. The Brazen Drakes tried to talk back, saying how they should go down to the planet and see if there were still loyal Brazen Drakes and if they could save their chapter. The Custody once again told them to stand down. A space marine continued to talk back, so Tyva shot him in the head and killed him. This led to the Brazen Drake commander voxing to his men, seize the fleet, consider everyone outside the chapter as hostile, which confirmed that their chapter, at its core, was not truly loyal. The Custodian and his Sister of Silence complement then proceeded to systematically massacre the entire Primaris force amongst their fleet before turning their attention to the civil war on the planet below. Now I do need to mention that there are a few other Custodians amongst the fleet that helped, but Tyvar took on an entire room of Brazen Drake Primaris, including their new chapter master, and he came out on top. There is one scene from this where an entire squad opens fire on Tyvar and he literally begins walking through it, deflecting the bolt shells midair with his Guardian Spear, drawing the fire long enough for a couple other custodians to arrive and massacre the squad. Now this bit of lore is considered very controversial as the Space Marines wanted to go down and join the Civil War on the Loyalist side, redeeming the honor of their chapter. They didn't want to become traitors or anything. However, when a custodian gives you an order, you obey that fucking order. They speak with the authority of the Emperor himself. If you are a good, loyal Space Marine, you will obey that order. By them 
arguing back, they basically confirm their lack of loyalty, choosing Chapter over Emperor, giving the Custodian no choice but to destroy them. I'm definitely Team Custodian here. This law fantastically highlighted the difference between Custodies and Space Marines. Custodies are so black and white, Space Marines are all kinds of shades of grey, and as the saying goes, grey is just one letter away from gay. This list would never be complete without speaking about the war in the webway. A lot of people are confused as to why the Custodians didn't just dumpster the traitors during the Horus Heresy, and the answer is they kind of did. Why do you think the Thousand Suns got all but wiped out? But mostly, they were just very busy. They were busy with taking on an endless tide of demons in the webway. 10,000 Custodies versus infinite chaos. The webway had been breached, and there was literally massive gaping holes in it that connected directly to the warp. The demons didn't need summoning rituals or warp fuel. They could literally just step out of their home into the webway, no issue. The trader leads including traded titans, also figured out how to access it. So it was less than 10,000 custodies, with a couple thousand sisters of silence and a small force of other imperials, versus the full might of chaos and a shitload of trader marines. Despite that, they actually held out for five years, and were actually originally winning the war. But 10,000, even 10,000 custodians, versus infinity, only has one final result. The highlight of this war was the final battle, in which the custodies had to fight without any rest for two weeks straight, killing millions of enemies. One such custodian had half his head ripped off, like you could literally sees brains, yet he fought on and was even one of the custodians who evacuated. The book literally says, Jubal hadn't even realized he was already dead. Custodians are extremely hardy, not because they have like two hearts or three lungs, they actually don't, but the organs they do have are wildly advanced. Like even if you pierce the custodian heart, he probably will survive as his heart is so strong it can more than likely keep beating and heal itself. Heretics are always extremely disturbed when it comes to custodian durability. Now although this list is highlighting custodian badassery, I wanted to take this time to speak about custodian comedy. They are unintentionally the funniest fuckers in the entire setting because of just how straight up they are. Here are some examples. During the war in the webway, a custodian violently kills a world eater, like he full cuts through his spine and he watches the world eater's eyes roll back into its skull as his life ends. He then uses the world eater's corpse as a seat to rest before remarking, Man, this has been the worst day since yesterday, without a hint of a smile or a laugh. In another scene, Diocletian is walking through the Imperial Palace when a scared young boy comes up to him to speak. Diocletian isn't really in the mood and is super blunt with the kid. So when the kid asks if he is the Emperor, Diocletian is like, no, my mother was a whore and my father was a traitor who turned against the Emperor, amongst other extremely blunt things that probably traumatized the poor kid. Before Diocletian then says, I am now done talking to you, and strodes on past. The kid then begins crying. In another example, a historian and a custodian are discussing and debating the creation of a custodian. The custodian says they are created extremely deliberately and controlled, so that each custodian ends up being exactly what he was intended to be. So the historian asks, so you were saying that someone thought it was a good idea to make Tribune Colquin a huge asshole. The custodian then proceeds to laugh so loudly it can be heard in other parts of the ship and it nearly deafens the historian. The last example I'll use for now is when a group of custodians save a woman from being executed by traitors. One of the custodian rips off his cloak and gives it to her because she's cold. The woman acts like she has just been given a sacred relic of the gods, but then the custodian is just like, dude, it's just a cloak. I just want to make it clear that although custodians are black and white, they aren't boring. They are actually very entertaining to read about. And finally, the last example of custodian badassery, which was actually quite hard to decide because there's so many, but I would say it would have to be the scene where Constantine Valdor has his ship shot down over some desert in Terra. When he emerges, without armor or weapons, he is surrounded by a bunch of raiders, some of whom are carrying plasma weapons and other things that could actually fuck up an unarmored custodian. Valdor then notices a subtle scope glint a few kilometers away and then decides to put on a bit of a magic show. He tells the raiders that through the power of the Emperor, he commands death itself, and then he points at one of the raiders before saying, in the Emperor's name, death. The raider explodes in a shower of gore. Valdor then points at different raiders and they too pop one by one. The raiders freak out and scatter as Valdor continues his magic show. In reality, no, Valdor cannot just blow people up with magic tricks. In reality, the Vindicari assassin he was searching for was in the distance, shooting the raiders with his big ass sniper rifle. To be honest, I probably could have included this in the comedy section of this video, as it's nice to see Valdor having a bit of fun for once. As a final honorable mention, to really drive home the fortitude of a custodian guard, a super powerful demon attacked the Emperor during the war in the webway, and the Emperor was actually losing to it, and he couldn't destroy it or banish it. So the next best solution was to turn it into a sword, and then stab it into the custodian, Ra Endymion. Ra is then told to run deep into the webway. The demon within Ra is like, fuck. I'm gonna be here for a while, as it reflects that the stars would burn out before it managed to corrupt a custodian. Ra accepts this extreme burden without hesitation and does his duty. Such is the way of a custodian guard. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up a cosplay calendar. This is the final 24 hours, guys and gals. You do not want to leave this earth without seeing what she Man Russ's tits look like. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more golden badass content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.